Hey Straw Hat Crew, I'm going to show you how to assemble La Mamba. It's an advanced drone build, so you definitely want to watch my video because I'm going to show you all sorts of techniques and tricks in order to assemble it nice and solid. Alright, let's get started. The first part we're going to work on is the top plate. Now, this first step is very critical. You definitely don't want to screw this up. This is why you're watching this video. Okay, so you see these four press nuts here. These need to be facing upward, okay? Because this is the top of the drone. You can also tell because these uh, antenna holders, the extrusions, these pockets on the bottom, should be facing downward. Okay, so this is the top, that's the bottom. Now, this is in an inverted frame, meaning the flight controller and the ESC stack is upside down. As such, we're gonna have all four of these 25 millimeter uh, M3 screws going like this. Alternatively, it might make more sense to have the longer screws in the front and the shorter screws in the back. It really depends on your flight controller and ESC situation. For example, with the Lumineer H7 flight controller, it comes with two of these ribbon cables, and each one connects pretty easily to these Acon 4-in-1 ESCs when the flight controller is situated in the front. If it's situated in the center, um, the front cable gets stretched quite a bit. An added benefit of having the flight controller be in the front is it's further away from the DJI air unit. Um, so the air unit won't be directly over the flight controller. This screw will not touch the air unit, but still, it just gives you extra factor of safety in terms of clearance. So the decision is up to you. Whatever components you have, just choose your screw lengths to suit your needs. Get your blue Loctite and apply some Loctite to all four of these screws, and then um, once you're done with that, you can put on these uh, M3 hex nuts and uh, screw these down all the way, but just make them hand tight for now. All right, our flight stack screws are installed. Get a crescent wrench or pliers or something and uh, tighten these nuts from the side. First, what I do is I grab a hold of the, uh, the nut and then I tighten it with the screwdriver down as far as I can go without stripping the head on the button head. And then I tighten it down the rest of the way with the hex or with the crescent wrench. Um, tightening that nut down. Do not over tighten because these stainless steel screws are not quite as hard as the black uh, steel screws. Um, I don't know why I'm putting another hex nut on there. Okay, next, um, get 16 millimeter button head screws and we're gonna install four of these in these locations. Get in there. So it looks like that. And then um, apply Loctite and then install the nuts the same way you did for the flight stack screws. Okay, tightening these 16 millimeter screws is a bit easier because you can use one of these 5.5 box drivers, whatever the hell that means. Um, yeah, so tighten with the screwdriver, then you can tighten with the, uh, the box driver, whatever it's called. So repeat that for the remaining three. Next we're going to install a couple arms onto the top plate. Uh, first we need to apply some silicone um, damping sheet to one of the arms. You only need one um, damping pad per pair of arms. So cut out an approximate size that you want in order to cover this flat spot on the arm and then peel off the backing and then stick that right on there. Then use the table to uh, apply that adhesive and make sure it's in full contact with the arm. Take some scissors to trim off the excess. Um, the blades on my scissors are black because they're actually non-stick scissors. I think they're coated with Teflon or something and that makes cutting sticky stuff like this really easy. Beautiful. To mount up these arms, um, take two pairs, one unsiliconed, one with silicone, and you're gonna need an arm brace, this little Wonder Woman looking thing. So uh, put a 22 millimeter button head 
M4 screw through the arm brace, the arm, and through this M4 hole. Flip that over, apply Loctite a good amount, be generous with it, and then put on an M4 hex nut and you just loosely tighten it using your fingers. So notice how the arms on the top plate are mounted to the top of the top plate. Okay, repeat that step for the other arm. Okay, so these two arms are fully mounted and this is good to go. Just kidding. What we want are the two arms to be as symmetrical as possible when inserting these final M3 screws in the middle here. Okay, so put this aside, then get two socket head M3 20 millimeter length screws and apply Loctite to both of them in preparation for the next step. Make sure the two arms are perfectly symmetrical and then take each of the uh, 20 millimeter M3 screws, insert them into the holes. One may go in all the way while the other may not. That's okay. Um, just get them both in there. And once you feel that they get to the point where they're making contact with the press nuts on either side here, then you press down on the arm in order to create a lever action, which pinches the silicone in between here. So it takes about maybe 35 to 50 pounds of force in order to get it in easily. So really put some muscle into it and maintain that pressure for the entire duration of this step. Tighten these screws down. The more pressure you put on it, um, the easier it is to screw these in. And tighten these down all the way. So these two screws are pretty important. That's why they are socket head, um, so they don't strip as easily while you're tightening them up. So now we've got a nice bit of compression happening on the silicone, which uh, helps make the frame uh, less uh, vibration-y. Okay, so we cannot forget to tighten these M4 outer screws, because uh, we put them in place, but we never tighten them. So take your 2.5 millimeter hex driver and a crescent wrench, or something like it, tighten down the screw, then tighten the rest of the way with the crescent wrench. And you can tighten the M4 screws a little bit tighter than you would with the M3 because they're bigger and don't strip as easily. Okay, give it a nice um, bend, see if there's any kind of looseness, and yeah, that should be good. All right, so the final step for the top plate is to install these standoffs. They're these beefy, weefy, 37 millimeter by six millimeter wide M3 aluminum standoffs. So we're gonna use 10 millimeter socket head screws. Be sure to use Loctite on all of these ones because these standoffs are gonna be semi-permanently attached to the top plate at all times. And uh, apply the Loctite, then thread the standoff on there. And you can just leave it hand tight for now and install all eight standoffs to uh, this hole, this hole, these holes right here. Okay, we got all of our eight standoffs hand tightened. And um, for the tightening process, I prefer to use a 90 degree Allen key and a uh, crescent wrench. So take your driver from one side and then your wrench or pliers from the other side and just tighten the driver as much as you can and then tighten the rest of the way with the uh, uh, crescent wrench. But make it so that in the end, um, the hexagon, the flat sides of the hexagon are in line with the rest of the drone. So looking at it from a top-down view, it should be like this. But notice how it's not quite perfect. I over tightened just a little bit. That's okay, you can just take your crescent wrench and tighten it like this. And it's not really tightening it, it's just spinning it in place, but there's still plenty of uh, tension on it, so it won't move anywhere once you let go of it. And repeat this step for the seven remaining standoffs. Align all of the standoffs in this orientation. 
Okay, um, now that these are all tightened, go back and just double check that they're all tight because it's especially important for this type of frame that these standoffs are secure. The reason being, the arms are separated from each other via these standoffs. So if any of these are loose, it could affect the tune. Okay, now a fun part is installing the camera brackets. Uh, so the reason why we oriented the standoffs this way is so that these can slide on in the correct orientation and uh, it does quite it does require a bit of force so push those down all the way and these are a mirrored pair and uh, these will fit both the DJI camera and the CADX Polar or other cameras made for the air unit and this piece is meant to slide onto the back over these two um, hexagonal standoffs and um, it is a tight fit because they are holding the AS150 plugs for the main battery leads. So don't install this yet because you're going to want to install your AS150 plugs um, and your ESCs and battery wires and all that stuff and then slide it over these standoffs. Oh yeah, and before you can do that even, you have to uh, install your XT60 mountable connector. This is meant to be powering your camera via a BEC. So you install that, then you solder up your ESCs and your battery wires, and then you can slide this guy right over the top. Also, an important note is the tabs on these XT60 mountable connectors stick down too far and they're going to interfere with this mount. So what you have to do is use a saw or a Dremel to cut off these little tabs to make room. Another thing to note about accessories is the DJI antenna extensions. So this goes through here, but obviously this is loose. Um, the reason why is because included in your kit should be some uh, uh, 3D printed um, washers. There is a shoulder washer that goes on the bottom, mounted like this, and you insert the antenna extension through the bottom of the pocket cut into the carbon fiber. Place a regular washer which is also 3D printed over the top, and then you screw it down with the provided um, brass nut that comes with the antenna extension. Uh, the purpose for this is insulating the ground from the frame. It's not good practice to have your frame share the ground circuit of your electronics. Okay, with that out of the way, let's move on to the bottom plate. The bottom plate is special because it has a battery quick release rail system, so let's install that first. The first step is to prepare our rail spacers. These are two and a half millimeters thick. These look very similar to the camera rail spacers, except they're thinner. So these four millimeter thick ones, that's for the camera. You don't want those. You want these ones, which are thinner. And we're going to apply a little bit of shimming to each side of these rail spacers to make it so that the battery plate can slide in and out nice and easily. So uh, cut a length of electrical tape that's the same length as the rail spacer. And then apply the tape and really press it on there. Work it down with your fingers. I'm making all sorts of noise over here. Okay, and then you can cut off the excess with your Teflon coated scissors. <laughs> okay, once you've done a decent job of cutting the excess off, uh, run your fingers over again to expose the holes, and then take an X-Acto knife and puncture these holes to make it easier for the screw to puncture as they're being mounted. So take some time to repeat this step for the other side and do the same process for the other one. Okay, so they both should look like this with the slits on all three holes and one layer of electrical tape on each side so that each rail has two layers of electrical tape worth of spacing. Okay, next we're gonna mount up these rails to the bottom plate. Um, what you wanna do is actually put a little bit of Loctite inside of the entrance to these press nut holes because um, there's press nuts on these two outer holes so apply Loctite there, there, and there. You can always wipe up the excess with a, uh, a q-tip or something. 
or just get a rag to wipe off the excess. If you do get any Loctite on this flat part, be sure to wipe it off because it may prevent the battery rail from sliding smoothly. Okay, so orientation. The rail goes on top of the rail spacer. The rail spacer has a slightly more rounded side. This goes inward on the same side as this chamfer. Before installing these rails, make sure that these chamfers are facing upward because these countersinks are used to make these screws fit flush so that the battery plate can uh, slide in and out easier. And then take a M3 12 millimeter countersunk screw and uh, push it in there. Not all the way. And then do another one right here. Then take your bottom plate, line the holes, and then push them down all the way through. And then you can tighten it with your screwdriver. And don't tighten them down all the way, just make it barely, barely tight, like barely even snug. So the, uh, the rail spacer and the rail should be movable like this. Repeat that for the other side. Next we have to assemble the leaf spring system. Okay, so to do this, um, first you need the nubbins. Uh, all the nubbins are the same. What a cute name. These are the camera nubbins and they're the battery nubbins. They're all the same size and you should have four. Uh, two for the battery and two for the camera. Get a 10 millimeter length socket head screw, insert them into the nubbin, then apply Loctite so as not to get Loctite on the plastic, which may damage it, and apply a generous amount at the tip. Okay, then we're going to apply or mount it through the leaf spring here, and then get the spring tab and screw it in like that. And screw it in so it's just barely snug. And then get the other one and do the same thing, barely tight. Okay, so it should look like this. It looks like one of those uh, back massagers. Next, get this piece. You want There's one that looks similar for the camera plate, but this one's narrower. Um, insert it such that the ramp, um, you see how there's a bit of a ledge there? You want the top of the ledge to be uh, facing inward. So put it under the bottom, then bend the leaf spring out of the way, then push this so that it's held in place by friction. Next we gotta get two of these 10 millimeter countersunk M3 screws and apply Loctite. Run it through the bottom plate and then into one of the press nuts of the leaf spring assembly and make it barely tight and repeat this step for the other one. Make sure to put Loctite on. Okay, now don't tighten down all the way just yet, just make it so it's barely snug. And while it's still loose, you can align the leaf spring so that this rod or this tab is centered between the two edges of the ramp that is on the 3D printed part. And then we can also push this tab that direction with our thumb or fingers in order to make it so these uh, nubbins are centered inside these holes. Then take a spare battery plate and push up on the lever in order to depress the battery nubbins. So insert the plate, push up, let it slide through, and get it so that it's in the middle, actually right here. And then you might have to jiggle it around in order to get the nubbins to activate or to press into the holes. Flip that over and make sure that the tab is still centered on the wedge brace plate. It looks like it is. So now that everything is aligned, um, make sure the battery rail spacers, which are this middle sandwiched piece of carbon fiber here, make sure that these are pressed inward as much as possible. You can even like take a screwdriver and press them inward. and then you can squeeze with either side of your fingers. And don't bother squeezing here because we haven't installed these screws yet. Um, we have to do that later. Okay, so now we can tighten the 
nubbins down using the two and a half millimeter screwdriver. And then we can tighten the uh, brace plate using the two millimeter driver. And don't tighten down like it's never going to come out again because you may need to adjust it, but enough so that you can have full confidence that it will fit. And that's a nice snap. So then you can do a final tightening, make sure it's down all the way, and uh, that should be good to go. Then we can insert the battery plate once again and give these battery rails a nice squeeze so we're taking up as much uh, slop in the, in the fastening and then tighten down on these countersunk screws to secure those rail spacers in place and don't tighten down like 100% tighten down like 75% because we do still have to install these two screws later on but at least for now it's uh, nice and secure then we have this little um, mitten which fits over the top of the tab to prevent yourself from getting carbon fiber splinters. Mm -hmm. Off camera I'm going to heat this up using a heat gun. Okay this TPU part is nice and warm so now I can easily fit it over the battery spring tab and now it's not going to come off. Okay the next step is mounting the arms to the bottom plate now. Uh, so unlike the top plate where the mount the arms were at the rear, mm -hmm. on the bottom plate the arms are at the front and they're aligned like this. Mm -hmm. The arms are on the same side as the rail system, so they're actually on the very bottom, bottom, bottom of the drone. So repeat the same exact process you used to mount the arms to the top plate as you do for the bottom plate here. The only difference being that instead of putting the screws in this direction into the Wonder Woman uh, arm brace, we are going to put the screw in from the top like this for aesthetic reasons and to uh, reduce the chance of wires getting um, cut by the sharp edge of the end of the bolt. So it should be done like this because this is the drone facing normally and this is the bottom of the drone. And so apply your Loctite and thread an M4 hex nut and do the rest of that jazz. Okay, we've got our bottom arms installed. Be sure to tighten these M4 screws. Sometimes people forget to do that. Next up, we're going to assemble our landing legs. Um, so this is the front landing leg, the one that doesn't have a press nut. The other two are supposed to be a mirrored pair. So notice how the press nut is embedded into one side. To install these, we're going to use these TPU brackets. You can distinguish them because the center hole here is narrower than the gel bracket mount because this one has a M3 heat insert installed, so that's how you can tell the difference. So we're going to prepare each of these landing brackets. To do this, we get a M3 8mm button head screw and then put on an M3 washer and then stick that through there and then it will hold with friction. Then repeat that for the other hole. And this one is ready to go. Now repeat that for the remaining three landing brackets. All right, the holes are filled for these landing brackets. Now let's install them onto the bottom plate. For the front landing leg, uh, place the bracket like so. And then just screw these screws directly into the press nut on the other side. So as you're tightening these, especially toward the beginning of their entrance into the press nut, you need to be applying downward force onto the screw to make sure that the threads engage properly. And then you want to tighten it so that the uh, screw um, is just below flush of the press nut. So that's what they should look like. Okay, let's do the other one. Now place it in a mirrored orientation, opposing the other one. And uh, let's tighten these up again. Next, for the uh, rear landing legs, we're going to face the bracket like so, inward, so that the, fl so that the flat side is uh, facing this slot here. And then, same process, screw that mamma jamma in. And repeat that for the other rear landing leg bracket. Okay, let's install a landing leg. To do this, put some Loctite 
on the entrance to the press nut hole. Not this side, but this side. And then we're gonna put this landing leg into this bracket and align the hole so it lines up. And then get a M3 eight millimeter button head screw with a washer and insert that into the bracket through the hole and the press nut of the landing leg. And as we tighten, if you look closely, you can see the eight millimeter screw should come just flush with the outside edge of the press nut. And you should tighten it down to the point where the leg is nice and stiff. Um, just a good mix of smooth and stiff so it holds. Okay, so give it one last more tighten, just a little bit, and then try to avoid moving the landing legs for a little bit as we wait for the Loctite to dry. Repeat this process for the other rear landing leg, and it's, remember, a mirrored pair, so it should go like this. Okay, next let's uh, install our front landing leg. For this, we use a 20 millimeter length socket head screw. Insert a uh, washer, and then place the landing leg into the uh, TPU brackets, aligning the holes as, as best as you can. And then insert your 20 millimeter screw and screw that all the way through the whole thing. Take an M3 washer, place it on that stubby stub sticking out, and then a M3 nylock nut. You can hold it in place with your finger to make it easier, and then thread it using a, a screwdriver from the other side. And then once it hits the nylon portion, you're going to need a uh, needle nose screws to hold the nut in place as you tighten from the other side. So as you can see, I really had to get in there with the pliers and push quite hard in order to maintain a good grip on the nut. Okay, our front leg is now fully mounted and we can make sure that the amount of tension that we desire is uh, nice and good. Okay, now we can install our landing feet. Now there's three distinct types. Uh, two of them are a mirrored pair like this, and then the front one is nice and centered. So take the front one, Place it on there. You don't really need to heat them up unless you're in very cold weather. Just brace it in place and then push down and it will snap right into place. And then for these ones, you've got to make sure to align them correctly so that the feet are facing outward like that. Place them through the hole and then press down. You can use the same process for the other leg. All right, no, those aren't coming off. So for the final step for the bottom plate assembly, let's install the DJI saddle. But before doing that, let's apply some electrical tape to here, here, and here, uh, because the air unit will be resting up against the frame and we don't want to ground the air unit against the frame. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut a little snippy snip and I'm just gonna eyeball this. Okay, that looks reasonably clean. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> then take two of these 10 millimeter length countersunk M3 screws and place them through the bottom on these countersunk holes right next to the rail and thread them into the square holes of the uh, DJI, DJI straddle. Okay, and the other 10 millimeter countersunk screw. Okay, so tighten that down. Um, it, you're threading directly into TPU, so it's not gonna be super um, tight, but uh, it's very strong. You're going to actually need to loosen this quite a bit before you can fit the air unit underneath the straddle. So the bottom plate is now complete. 
Next up, we're going to make the universal camera mount now. So this uh, camera quick release system utilizes these plates, which act very similar to the battery quick release mechanism, and they just slide right in here and click into place. So um, we're going to use the same rail system as before, and in fact the rail spacers look very similar, but these ones are four millimeters in order to match the thickness of the camera quick release plate. So first step is to apply one layer of electrical tape to only one side of these camera rail spacers. You only need one layer because it's imperative that the fitment for this camera plate is nice and tight in order to prevent any kind of jiggling which could show up in the footage. So only one layer of electrical tape is necessary. That means the sliding action won't be quite as easy. It might get a little hard to move sometimes, but at least it will be stiff and locked in. And make sure to put little slits on each of the holes to make it easier for screws to access. Okay, next get these um, fang brackets. That's, they look like these. They look like little frogs. And uh, get 16 millimeter countersunk screw and then insert that through the rail spacers. Um, I usually put the electrical tape on the top so that when the screw goes through, it doesn't pull out the electrical tape between the gap. So push that through and get another one. Push that through and you only need two for now. And then this part's important. Make sure these countersink chamfers are facing up toward you. Place the two screws through there such that the rail is aligned like this. Then take the fang bracket and press it onto these two screws and it will hold in place with friction. And you might even need to help it out by screwing it in from the back side. and it will hold in place just fine like that. Make sure the flat side of the fang bracket is facing inward. Okay, repeat this for the other side now. Okay, that's what it should look like for now. And let's move on to the gel bracket preparation. Get your soldering iron, preheat it to 350 degrees Celsius, then place a heat insert, place a heat insert into the tip of the soldering iron in the correct direction then quickly place it onto the gel bracket through the flat side. Submerge it slightly below the surface, then press it down on a hard metal surface so that when it solidifies, it makes a nice flat surface. And if you wanna be extra fancy, you can take that little belly button of leftover TPU flashing and pull that right out. All right, so now we can take two more 16 millimeter countersunk screws, run them through, and then this time we want these gel brackets to be facing outward with the flat surface facing like this. Okay, and let's do that for the other one as well. Push that through and face it outward. Okay, this guy is still loose, so what we need to do is get an 8 millimeter button head screw, insert that from the top, and then a M3 washer, press that down in there, and then get some Loctite, because we're gonna install a regular M3 hex nut, one of these guys on here, and just hold that in place with the tip of your finger, and you can thread the screw in nice and easy. Once you have that threaded in, you can take some needle nose pliers and uh, give it some pressure, really get in there, and then tighten it down from the back side and tighten it to the point where the screw is about flush or slightly above the hex nut. And repeat that for the other side here. Okay, we have to cinch up these remaining six screws. To do that, um, we're gonna be using M3 Nylock nuts and for all of these joints, we're once again going to need washers. So place a washer before you place a nail lock nut, and you can hold it in place with the tip of your finger, maybe even get the thread started, and then take your screwdriver from the back side in order to 
thread it in all the way. And then um, just get it so they're threaded for now. Um, don't worry about tightening it and repeat this for the remaining five. Okay, so all the nylock nuts are installed, but they're not tightened at all. Don't bother tightening them because um, we're going to be uh, calibrating our quick release um, system for our camera plate. So if they're tight, we won't be able to do that as easily. So make sure everything is still loose. Let's assemble our camera leaf spring system. It uses the same exact nubbins as the battery plate. And this time we're going to be using 8 millimeter socket head M3 screws. Place the screw in through the nubbin, then apply Loctite, a generous amount, and then place it through the leaf spring. It doesn't matter which side actually because it's a, it's a rectangle. And then uh, screw it into the leaf spring tab and barely tight, like not even snug. Okay, repeat that with the other nubbin. Okay, and run that through. And just barely snug. So it should still be able to move around like this. Then get the wider version of the uh, wedge brace plate, the 3D printed part, and slip that between the tab and the leaf spring such that the ramp, the upper side of the ramp is located right here. Then prepare two M3 by 8 millimeter countersunk screws, these short little guys, uh, with some Loctite and then run them through the chamfered holes of the camera base plate and then get your leaf spring assembly here and then uh, align the nubbins with the holes and then run the screw through the press nut on the uh, brace. Okay, we got one. Now let's Loctite the other. Okay, and place that through the second hole. And uh, don't tighten it down all the way, just make it barely snug. Maybe a little bit tighter than the camera nubbins, but still not, not tight at all. Okay, and then at this point, you can uh, kind of shimmy it around to make sure that the uh, spring tab is centered on either side of the ramp of the spring brace. Then take a camera plate and slide it in here, pressing up on the lever to depress the nubbins. And uh, let's bring that to about this point and make sure that these camera nubbins are fully seated upward. And you can squeeze these uh, rail spacers on the side inward so that they're making good contact with the sides of the camera plate. Okay, let's uh, tighten things down a little bit just to see how our fitment is. And these holes are handy because we can use them as through holes for tightening the brace plate. Okay, so looking at the other side, double checking, making sure that the tab is centered. Okay, and so let's uh, actuate it and see if the nubbins are able to go through each of the holes with no issues. And uh, let's tighten these down the rest of the way. Okay, and reinsert the camera plate just to double check that we're still well aligned. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, now we can finally tighten down these six nylock nuts and uh, it's a little bit cumbersome. You have to get in there with uh, needle nose pliers and kind of jam them in there to get a good purchase on the nut. And I usually have to do this with two hands using a table to brace up against but you just hold it like that and then you take a screw from the other side to tighten them down. So repeat this for all six nylock nuts in order to tighten down these rail spacers. Okay, so I tightened mine down and I noticed the screws are not coming quite all the way flush with the nut. That's okay as long as the nylock, the nylon um, insert is being engaged. It will hold just fine. And um, double check that you can still fit the camera uh, plate in there. So this is actually a little tight, but uh, actually, no, that's pretty good. I like it, it's really tight. Cause you want it to be like almost no clearance in order to prevent any kind of uh, shaking or slop. 
what you can do to help with the uh, um, camera plate mm -hmm. smoothness is just apply some silicone grease to a Q-tip and then uh, work it around these little nubbins <laughs> and uh, this is a silicone compound, so it's not going to damage the plastic of these uh, glass fiber reinforced nylon nubbins. Okay, and then apply a little more grease, and we're gonna work that into the inner rails here. Now that it's lubed up, let's see if there's any improvement. Oh yeah, so already I can feel that. But it's still nice and rock solid. Okay, so let me talk more about the camera plate itself. It comes with these countersunk number three Phillips um, head screws. They're quarter 20 thread, so it'll fit right into the camera. And they're countersunk so that they can be um, sit flush. So that's why these camera plates are a thick four millimeter carbon. It's so that the head can actually clear the uh, sliding surface of the quick release. Okay, don't forget your little mitten here. Um, you need your mittens out in the cold weather. So warm up your mitten with a hot air gun. Oh yeah, nice and toasty. Okay, let's prepare the gel mounts now. So your kit should come with these red soft mounts and you push the aluminum sleeve out through the center to make it easier to uh, push this into the gel mount. Work it in there, make sure it's nice and centered. The inside of these gel mounts has a little bit of a groove that seats into the groove of the beta gels in order to make it more of a uh, firm hold. Anyway, once that's installed, then you can replace the aluminum sleeve. And let's repeat that for the remaining three gel mounts. Okay, now that our gel mounts are situated like that, um, let's do the same thing that we did with the landing legs and use these eight millimeter button head screws. Place a washer and then push it through each of the holes on all of these gel mounts. Okay, now that we got our eight millimeter screws on here, let's install two of these gel mounts onto the top plate. Before we do that though, we need to install some additional hardware. So these little washers here are 3D printed And then you take another um, 3D printed washer, then take some blue Loctite and give it a little bit of clearance so that you're making sure not to touch the 3D print with the Loctite. And then install a M3 hex nut and thread that all the way down there. And then you can tighten it down all the way using a hex driver on the other side. And uh, keep in mind you're tightening up against the 3D print so you don't need to go super hard, but you do want it snug so it doesn't come loose. And that's it right there, our little isolation mount. So we need to make one more of these with a uh, 20 millimeter screw going through the center. Okay, now that I've got both of these gel mounts ready to go with 20 millimeter screws running through the axles of the gels, um, I'm gonna apply some Loctite to the back side of these press nuts and then install the gel mount such that the flat side is facing outward. And then from the back side, we can just tighten it against the press nuts, which are conveniently placed on the back. And uh, give it enough pressure so that the thread engages the press nuts without slipping and stripping. All right, and if there's any excess Loctite, you can wipe that up with a Q-tip. Notice how the screws are slightly below flush of the press nut. Okay, repeat that for the other side. All right, we finished the uh, front gel mounts. This is what it should look like. Now these other two gel mounts go onto the rear of the camera mount. These ones work slightly differently. Um, we're gonna use a 16 millimeter length button head screw. Uh, put that through one of these plastic washers again, and then through um, the gel. For all of these gels, by the way, you want to insert the screw through the curvy side. So this is the curvy side, this is the flat side. The screw always enters on the curvy side. 
and then get another plastic washer and then I put some Loctite right there and hold that with your screwdriver and then you can thread that directly into the brass 3D printed uh, heat insert and screw that down all the way until it's nice and snug and it will still rotate because the gel is actually rotating about the axle. Now you can repeat this for the other side. We're still not quite done with the camera mount. We have to install the fangs. Before installing the fang, um, you want to apply some Loctite to the press nut holes on the inside here. Then get your 10 millimeter button head screw with a washer, place it on the entrance of the fang bracket, then align the holes and screw it into the press nut. And then on the other side, the screw should be just about flush with the press nut. And you can wipe off that excess Loctite with a Q-tip. Now let's repeat that with the other hole. Uh, push that in there, screw it in until the back side is about flush. And then wipe it up with a Q-tip. And if it's not flush and it feels like it still needs to be tightened, then go ahead and tighten it. It's pretty strong. Okay, repeat this for the other side now. Okay, the camera mount is finally done. And at this point, you probably should start working on placing your electronics and doing all that work uh, before putting on the camera mount. It just makes things easier because there's less things poking up and sticking out at you as you're working on your stuff. When you're ready to install your camera bracket, what you do is you first install the fangs, like so. Um, they can, you know, stretch apart like that, and that's totally fine. And then you line up the rear gel mounts with their corresponding press nut holes and screw them down. I do not use Loctite for these ones because I uh, install and remove the camera mount multiple times. Then finally you can install these knurled M3 uh, thumb nuts onto the 20 millimeter shafts for the front gel mounts. Okay, and uh, make sure it's like nice and secure and it feels solid. And if you unscrew these, then you can uh, rotate the whole camera mount up and down nice and easily. Okay, for completeness sake, I'm going to show you how to install the two halves together. So for um, these four holes, you want to use 10 millimeter socket head screws. And I prefer socket head for these joints because you really want to tighten them down. Um, you do not need Loctite. In fact, I recommend against Loctite because you're going to be taking your bottom plate on and off uh, if you need to do any service on the electronics. But the socket head hex allows for more torque so you can really tighten it down because it's important that these standoffs are all tight because the standoffs are the bridge that connects the top arms to the bottom arms. And then for these front um, screws, you'll notice that the screws are actually squishing the 3D printed camera mount because the camera uh, these 3D prints are actually 38 millimeters length. They're slightly longer than the standoffs, and that provides a little bit of a squish factor, so it has a stronger hold on the camera and there's less vibration. Now for the rear portion, um, we want 16 millimeter countersink screws, and these finally go through the rails of the battery quick release mechanism. So they're kind of a dual purpose screw in order to save space and weight. And at this point, since we're putting these screws in, we can go ahead and tighten these down all the way and make sure they're all nice and snug. Then lastly, we can use these 10 millimeter countersink screws and insert them into the remaining holes near the battery spring brace plate and screw those down. All right. That's the frame right there, and uh, give the arms a good bend, see if there's any kind of looseness or anything like that. Um, because of this frame design, uh, the arms are not going to be as rigid as some of my past designs, because there's these standoffs connecting these two plates, but it should be surprisingly stiff for a staggered design like this. 
Next, we need to install these rubber pads to the camera plate. The purpose of these is to provide clearance to prevent the camera from touching the rails as the camera plate slides through the mount. So cut these two strips of rubber, um, just eyeball it using the camera plate itself as a template, and then peel off the backing. And then what you can do is use these uh, edges right here on the rectangle as the flush point for the rubber strip and try to get it as line as possible and then press that down. And let's do the other one now. Okay, flush with the edge of the rectangle and the edge of the other rectangle. Next I need to show you how to install the battery plate to a battery. To do this you need to cut out two more of these rubber strips and stick them onto the bottom of the battery plate like so. Now, if the adhesive ever comes off of these rubber strips, um, all is not lost. You can actually use double-sided scotch mounting, or what it, I don't know, it's not called mounting tape, but it's this thin cellophane tape, and you can actually just stick that right on there, just like that, and stick it back to the battery plate. That's just in case the adhesive comes off for whatever reason. Next, you will need some one half inch wide strapping tape, fiberglass reinforced strapping tape. Um, so, you line up the battery plate with the battery. Usually, I try to be forward biased a little bit. And then, take the strapping pit tape, align it with the grooves of the uh, battery plate. And it's very important that you do not accidentally overhang the tape outside of the groove. This is so that the uh, sliding, this is so that the sliding action of the quick release is nice and smooth. So be really careful to uh, align it perfectly, get it nice and in the groove. Two layers is just fine. But if you want to do three, then go right ahead. And we got to do the other one too, so um, line that up perfectly. More perfect than I do it, because I'm at a disadvantage right now. Okay, and I got a little bit of 3D printed gunk here. Okay, and really stretch it tight over the lipo. And yeah, and this fiberglass tape is really, really strong. In addition, there's chamfers right here so that the carbon fiber doesn't cut into the tape. So the purpose of these rubber strips is much the same as the camera plate rubber strips. It's to prevent the battery from touching the edges of the rail as it's sliding into the drone. Let me show you how the motor mounts work. Uh, these motors are just an example only. I do not recommend these motors because they're the wrong KV. Uh, you want a 900 KV if you're running 6S, 9 inch. These are 1100 KV, it's a little too hot. Okay, so you use a six millimeter button head screw, apply some Loctite, then insert it into either side of a motor mount, and then install the motor such that the wires are facing away from the uh, singular hole right here and toward the dual holes. And then install the rest of the screws. Be sure to use Loctite on each and every one of them. And then let's do the same thing to its uh, partner motor. Every motor gets its own individual motor plate. Okay, bam, just like that, we've got two motors that are going to be axially opposed. Next, what we're gonna do is uh, place the motors on the arm, just like that. And then this is gonna take three arms. You take a uh, 20 millimeter socket head screw insert it from the top or the bottom or whatever direction you want. You can flip it over and then apply some Loctite. 
now that it's protruding through the other side. Get plenty on there. Don't be shy with the Loctite for these um, joints. And then you can gently thread that on there. And then repeat that for the other screws. Okay, now it's threaded. Now to tighten these, I use uh, this tool. And so I can come in from this side, tighten in as much as I can with the two and a half millimeter driver, and then I can tighten it on this side the rest of the way to get that nut fully down on there. Get down on there. Okay, and that's how you mount the motors to the Mamba. And there are two plates, you know, one for each motor, and this is because in a crash, usually these motor plates break and it's a sacrificial part. If this breaks, the arm won't break, which is much more difficult to replace and more expensive. So that's why I have the dual motor plate system. Okay, that concludes the build tutorial for La Mama. If you have any further questions, Feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you with an answer. Um, but otherwise, good luck on the rest of your build and take lots of care with all your solder joints so that you can cine lift some cool cameras nice and successfully.